Hello and welcome to today's video. This is my 2023 bullet journal and I've actually done something a bit different for this video just because of how long this was taken. I've set it up completely so there's not going to be any time lapse section for this one which is what I normally do with all of my bullet and reading journal videos. For this it is just going to be a big talk through of what the pages are they are if i start opening it you'll see the pages are already complete so i'm just going to be talking through them today i know this is a bit different to normal but it was going to end up being over an hour if i left it <laughs> with all the time lapse so this is what we're going for and i hope that you still enjoy it so yeah let's just get into it this here is my 2023 reading journal this is the loistrum 1917 one i've used this for one two three this will be my fourth year using it now so yeah i'm very happy with this i really like the kit i like the quality of it i like the pages and for the quality that you get the price is very decent as well so yeah i'm really happy with this on the front i've just put one sticker on it over the course of the year i might add more to it but for now i've just stuck to the one sticker so yeah let's open it up so on the first page we just have 2023 on the side i just tried to make it pretty i've just put 2023 honestly this is just because this is only like really a half page here because this page this side isn't connected so i never end up using this page so just making it pretty is how i like to do it then if we turn over this is my like yearly overview i do six months on the one page then six months on the other for this year i decided to use some craft paper to just like separate out um the different days we use brown paper just to wrap all of our presents for like all year round but also christmas so i just keep all the scraps to be able to use in my bullet journal for instance if i grab in there we've just wrapped all of our christmas presents i've got all of these little tiny scraps like ready for the rest of the year because they're too small now to wrap anything with but i can reuse them and get more use out of them by using them in here so yeah we've just got january february march april may june and how i've basically done it is if there's a birthday i've done a pinky red circle around them and then underneath actually wrote out what's going on this means throughout the year i can add more stuff in underneath and just use a different color to code it in so for instance um in april we've also got a purple heart he here because that's our anniversary and then if we flip over to the next page we've just got more birthdays and then i've used a red paw print for the cat's adoption day just simple stuff like that but i think it works really well i'm really a big fan of both of these pages they look pretty much the exact same and i just used little butterflies to accent the page and make it look a bit prettier and yeah i'm really happy with how it's turned out this is the first time that i'm using this sort of yearly setup the rest of the years i've had a lion for every single day and I just don't end up using it so I'm hoping that this one I'll get more use out of it and I can actually use it a bit more efficiently than how I have previous years. If it doesn't work I'll just change it again for next year but yeah really happy with how it's looking so far. Then we have my 2023 bucket list. This is a page that I do every year of just things that I want to achieve. I have already messed up on this page. Let me know down below if you can see it. I will point it out in a second but yeah I have messed up but that's all good i wrote these down very quickly on another piece of paper and just copied them over and i have wrote get a dog here and adopt a dog here they are obviously the same goal but oh well it doesn't matter it's it's mine and i do really want to get a dog this year so you know it being in there maybe i'll just have to get two <laughs> i don't know but yeah so i've just done this list i just think it's nice to look at nice to especially look back at during the year what I've wanted to do at the start, what I've managed to achieve, what I can do to keep learning, what I can do to help. For instance, finish a knitting project should be a super easy thing. I've got a very small amount of a scarf to get finished. Am I ever going to do it? I don't know, but putting it down here, maybe, just maybe I will. So yeah, that is the 2023 bucket list. I also really like how the title turned out. It doesn't look that great, I'm not going to lie, but I like the idea of it. So I just wrote it on top of... Um, the like book page scrapbook paper and then cut it out so if i bring this closer you'll see that for eight you can see the words so it's actually using like book pages so yeah i'm really happy with that i think it's turned out quite cool then if we flip over we have quarterly goals on this side of the page and i just like to split it up into quarters because honestly i can't 
visualize very far ahead. If I just had yearly goals, I feel like the chances of me achieving them would be a lot lower. So splitting it up into quarters, at the start of each quarter, I can come up with three or four goals that are actually realistic for the next three months. Um, I might end up deciding there's something big I want to do this year and putting it in quarter four, I don't know. Uh, for instance, like a goal of mine really is to get a dog. I know I'm saying it again, but it is. I'd love to get a dog this year. So that could go in quarter four and I might just achieve it before then. But I like to do it quarter by quarter. It works really well for me. I've done this for three years now and I do think it is the best way for me to actually try and achieve goals. Then on this side of the page we have places explored. So this is just new places that we end up going in the year, whether that be in this country or abroad, wherever it is. For instance, uh, this year I really want to go to Scotland. I've never been to Scotland before, so if we do go, if we end up getting the train, I can put a train ticket in here. If we end up going in the car, I'm sure we'll have to pay for parking somewhere, I can put that in here. Just something like that, just to signify where we've been and yeah. Very scrapbook style, they would just add stuff in and hope there's enough room and make it work. But I really like having this page. So then on to the next page, we have plant watering. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to keep a track of my plants. My plants thrive in the summer. In the summer, I do so good with them and every winter, half of them die. So yeah, <laughs> it's a problem. I just don't think they're getting enough light, but this is just a way for me to track my watering. So I've split it up into cacti, palm, prayer, coconut, and then all, most weeks, I will water all of them. But in the winter, some of my plants require a lot less water than others. So I've put the little categories in as well. And yeah, when I do that, I'll just put the color on the day. I just printed out these really tiny little calendars for all the months. So yeah. I'm hoping it'll work. My one last year did not work, so I've looked for more inspiration, done more research, and yeah, we'll give it another go with a different layout and see if we can get it to work this time. Then on this side, I haven't put a title or anything, but this is just my cleaning stuff. Every week, me and Jay, we have a cleaning list, we go through it, we try and do as much as possible. I thought it'd be really good that if I have just a tiny bit of time, like if I have enough time to do a room, that I can just come here, for instance, if I had enough time to do the bedroom, I can pull this out, it's got all of the different things that need doing in the bedroom and then when I'm done with it I can just put it away. Um, I just thought it'd be nice to have and a nice way to see everything how it is. So we've got office, the stairs, the bedroom, the bathroom, the kitchen, the living room and then everything else which is literally just everything else. So yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, I definitely, if I reuse this next year, I will come up with a better way to make this because it is very big and bulky. I just kind of like decided to wing it. I probably should have looked up some tutorials, but there we go. That's how it is for now. And then on to the next page, we have my period tracker this side. I've used a period tracker in my bullet journals for three years now. I think it's really good. Uh, it helps me actually, you know, like if I didn't have a period tracker and I needed to know where my last period was, where my next period is. I genuinely couldn't tell you. And it's also really useful because often I'll suddenly get very moody and emotional and I can look at this and be like, oh, well, actually you're doing your period in a few days. So that is probably why you're feeling so overwhelmed. <laughs> so yeah. And then on the next side, we have the cat tracker. So the cats need worming four times a year, fleeing, um, well, flea treating 12 times a year so we've got those and I can write in the days we've got their vet appointments we can write that in here and then any medications that they're prescribed or given for it the year I can make a note of then if we have any problems anything all the information I need for anything immediate is here at the end of the year all information from this page gets transferred into their like folder that I have for them that has all of the health information in for both us to use but also if a problem ever happened when someone was cat sitting it would be there for them so yeah that is why i like to use this page and i've got a little picture of my cats here this isn't the best sticker i made it a few years ago and the color's definitely gone but i can still see how cute they are then we have financial health honestly i just need to sort my savings out we moved into this house two years ago and got the cats pretty much straight away and then a year after that the cats needed a big operation that was not covered by their insurance so that was great um but yeah i haven't got my savings back up since then so yeah the first two things that i'm hoping to do this year is to save up six months of the mortgage and six months of the bills then after that i'll come up with more savings goals for myself and get them in there so yeah that is the plan 
Oh, and I just have this little key here. I haven't wrote the word key because I know what it is and it's like I'm the only one who's going to use this. But yeah, basically two squares is every hundred pound. And I'll just keep that going throughout no matter how many I add in. Then we have a weight tracker. I will weigh myself on the first day of the year and then like just basically track it. Uh, I am very new to going to the gym. I have literally started like two months ago. So I really don't know what my plan is yet for the next year. I don't know how to set goals, how to do any of that. So I'm figuring I just track it, just keep, keep my eye on it, see what I want to do, see what I want to achieve and see how the gym affects everything. Because obviously normally uh, I, I would think losing weight is what I would want to do, but having just joined the gym, muscle weighs more than fat. So yeah, essentially I have no clue what I'm doing yet, so I've left it very blank and just put the first, <laughs> first little scale in. But I will do something here to kind of keep track. And yeah, this is just for myself. Um, so that is that one. Then I did this cool little door thing just because I saw someone else do it and wanted to give it a go, but I really did not need to do this basically, is uh, what I'm saying. But we've got a few extra pages that I've added in just of things that I think could be helpful for me. So a basic food chart, which is like the food that I need to get every week before I do a meal plan. So every week I'll do a meal plan and then do the food shop. Uh, but to get before the meal plan is done, so like for breakfast and lunches, that's all here. Um, and then some easy meals, so if I'm feeling a bit crap, struggling to cook, Jay's struggling to cook, and we don't know what we're doing, there's just some easy meals right down here. Sometimes the most difficult thing to do if you're feeling a bit crap is to decide what to eat. So I just like having some breakdown, you know, picking from six things to make is a lot easier than not having anything wrote down and trying to figure out what to make. So that's why that's there. And yeah, I like how this turned out. It's pretty decent. On the next page, I wrote down my refresh routine. Oh, I probably do this two or three times a year where I just have a day where I refresh myself, start to feel better about myself. Normally the last day of the year, and I, I do plan to do it the last day of this year as well, the 31st of December, I do plan to do my refresh routine, start feeling good about myself and just set myself up good for the next year. So I've just wrote it down. This isn't gonna work for everyone. I like, this is just what I found works for me and puts me in a very good mood to start the next day with. So yeah, that's what I wrote down here. So I actually got it in writing because up until now, I've just done what I think is best. And then the last page of the like yearly setup section is my grid spacing. I don't need a lot of grid spacing, honestly. I just don't use it. I've done big grid spacing setups before and not looked at them once. And I've wrote grid spacing in previous journals and thought, oh, I'll well, set it up as and when I need it and just not even bothered. So what I've done for this year is literally just done the things that I use. So every weekly spread is set up like this with this square, this square here, this rectangle is every day of the year. So for instance, when, when does this year? So this, the first one for this year will be Monday the 2nd. So this would be Monday the 2nd and this is my like square to fill out that day. I also do a calendar every month and this square here is every day on the calendar. And then I just did some simple lines of half a page, a third of a page, a quarter of a page, half a page, third of a page, quarter of a page. That's all I need. I don't do anything super complicated or super detailed in this, so I, I just don't need anything extra. This works and hopefully will work great for me. And then I've left a blank page just in case at some point through the year there becomes something else that I want to track, something else that I feel like is important enough to go in the yearly section. There's a blank page ready and waiting, so yes. On to the January setup. I am including January in this video just because it's the same as every month and I haven't done anything super inventive this month. I've just kept it like the same as the rest of these pages, the same scrapbook style, because honestly I just wanted to get all this set up the same way and be able to start my year freshly. However, I'm very happy with this. And I did do one extra thing. I have loads of these little squares, they're like scrapbooking squares. Um, and I also cut some out so I had extra flowers to put around and I'm honestly just really happy with how it turned out. So yeah, we've got the word January, we've got our mini little calendar, I do that every month. And then at some point during the middle of last year, I started on the other page of the like monthly title page, adding in some monthly goals. 
So at the start of the month, I will write down two or three goals, maybe more, maybe less, of things I'd like to achieve or get done that month. It could be something as simple as, you know, I, I know I haven't done it in the last few months, cleaning the outside of the windows around the house. I mean, that does, doesn't sound like a goal, but it's something that needs doing and it's something I would probably want to make sure I get done by the end of the month. So I could write something like that there. And it could be more of like an actual goal-based goal to actually, uh, let me think here. Um, oh, like on the rowing machine, I'm trying to get to 1,000 meters in less than five minutes. So far, I haven't quite hit that. It keeps being 900 and something. So I could actually write that down as a goal and see if I can do it. Stuff like that. It can be absolutely anything and anything that is important to me that month. Then we have the calendar view. You can kind of ignore this. These aren't really necessary. Basically, at some point in January, the cats will need flea treating, but I don't know when yet. And we're not sure if they're going to be able to go to the vets during the end of December because the vets is very busy. Uh, so their booster might have to be pushed to January. So I've just stuck these stickers in here for if I need them. So I don't have to find them out again. But yeah, so January monthly view. We've just got the big calendar. That's all I need. Uh, I wrote down all the birthdays. I literally can just flick back to January and copy them over. So that is really great. I've got whether it's recycling day or a rubbish day and then I've got every day that should be a YouTube upload day. So far I haven't got anything planned for January we've really been keeping the new year clear so that is all I've got to do this month. Normally there's more to it but for this month that is all of this page and yeah really happy with how this turned out really like the look of it. Then the brain dump. I do one of these every month and most months I completely fill it up. I use this for anything and everything literally if i just have something in my brain and i need to get it out i need to get it broke down on paper it could be something serious it could be something like for work it could be a shopping list it could be just a note that i need to make to myself absolutely anything it goes in the brain dump i've got it broke down i don't need to keep it in my brain anymore and then last but not least we have our first weekly setup page this is the weekly setup that i have just been using for a while now i love it it works so amazingly for me it's the perfect setup so i have six boxes each box is a day of the week and then the last box the sixth box is split into two and we have the weekend days in these are great for me because it means i can't give myself too much to do but yeah literally these are just my to-do lists these boxes for how big i write for how much i write in like a one to do note um it is basically very realistic for me to actually get done in a day and you know that's what i want i want to be able to write stuff down actually get it done and then you feel good about that i used to give myself as much room as i wanted to write my to-do list and then i felt bad because i wasn't getting it done so i restrict my space to this box and that box for me is realistic so yeah that is the first weekly setup i added in these cool little like leaf papers and then added some flowers on top and yeah this is just january week one so that was the bullet journal setup for 2023 um i do hope you enjoyed it i hope that you liked it um if you haven't done your bullet journal yet i hope it gave you some inspiration and yeah I do hope you liked the video, give it a like if you did like it, subscribe down below if you'd like to see more content like this, and hopefully I'll see you next time, bye!